My name is Zach Taylor. I'm a retired Border Patrol officer. My main job was understanding and having intelligence capabilities about drug smuggling across the U.S. border and human smuggling across the U.S. border to bring contraband and people into the United States. That's what I did for 26 years. National security is a component of the immigration laws and the reason that immigration officers exist because the immigration laws are designed to primarily do just two things, protect national security and public safety. The component of national security is the economy and American jobs because the foundation of American society, which is the family unit, depends on jobs and the economy for their livelihood. On the other side is the public safety, which includes public health, and that is so the people will be secure in their persons and their property from outside source threats. In other words, people coming in to take over America by force or by subterfuge. Right now, Department of Homeland Security is in charge of, through Customs and Border Protection, the apprehension and collection of the illegal aliens. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention is in charge of the screening with the U.S. Public Health Service. I've never seen the CDC or U.S. Public Health Service work together with the Border Patrol at the border, ever. The agents are telling us that they're seeing some people that are obviously sick uh, with shivering type illnesses, uh, with possibly uh, uh, dehydrating illnesses like diarrhea and vomiting. But those people are disappearing. We don't know what they have, where they're going, where they're taking them. Surely they, they're being quarantined somewhere, we just don't know where. And even the agents don't know what the uh, diagnosis is of these illnesses. Tie that in with the fact that these people can come through almost anywhere in the world and are funneling into Mexico. And we already know there's epidemic uh, levels of certain diseases in Mexico and Central America. We don't know if these people are showing these diseases, if they're even being screened for them. The real troubling part of this is we know that in West Africa right now, there's an Ebola outbreak that does not meet the parameters of communicable diseases. Normally, Ebola virus starts in the jungle and moves into an indigenous population in the jungle and then from there into a larger population area. What they're experiencing in West Africa in three countries right now is an Ebola outbreak in three separate cities at the same time. This is very unusual. It is almost as if the virus was planted in those three cities to infect that population. In other words, the, the virus is working in the reverse of what it has historically. Before it moved from the jungle into the populated area, now it's starting in the most populated areas in those cities and working through the population. If we had a control event, I'll give you an example. Border Patrol has a drug smuggling operation and they've been surveilling it. And after the car loads up and takes off, we stop the car. And the person driving the car hands us a diplomatic passport saying they're a diplomatic uh, alien inside the United States. We stop right there. We call the Department of State. The Department of State takes it from there. The person is not prosecuted. Yes, we may or may not seize the vehicle and the drugs. The United States public never knows that happened. That's a controlled event. In this situation, where you have hundreds of thousands, literally, of people coming across the border, and you're only catching a small fraction, if you're not telling the public that 80 to 90 percent of what's coming across the border is not being apprehended and you're putting their focus on this 10 percent that is being apprehended only showing them the 1 percent that are 6, 8, 10 years old and appeal to the compassion of the American people 
and not show them, the people with these serious communicable diseases, the fact that they are known gang members, they have the gang tats all over them, because they do not have a conviction in the United States, they're turned loose free in the United States. We don't know when CDC takes custody of